Welcome to this video, I'm Ricardo and Musicus Practicus and this video is the first one of the new year, the 2023. Last week I got the flu, but now I'm pretty good, only my voice is not at the top level. And remember first of all to increase your immunity system. Every morning a spoon of cold liver oil and then a glass of vitamin C. Nice, we are ready to start. This first video of the new year is something different and special. This video is what we can learn from Jan Sebastian Bach's Prelude 925. In this video we're gonna analyze all the patterns and all the techniques, contrapuntal techniques and harmonic techniques that Bach uses in this piece. So remember that you can download the analysis of this piece page of Patreon with a little subscription and by doing that you get the access to Improvisation Elements, a series, a special series where you can learn improvisation with simple and fun exercises. Let's start with the video. Okay, first of all let's listen to the complete piece I recorded some days ago and I published on YouTube and Instagram and TikTok. As you can see, this prelude is not so long and it is based on a melody that is the following one. This is the basic fundamental of all what we will see in this piece. So, uh, first of all, let's see how the first bar is harmonized. We have this melody with a jump from D to A, we are in D major, so the first degree is D and the fifth degree is A. If you have watched my video about the printer, I'm sure you recognize the printer here. Or better, the modulating printer, because this printer takes us from the first degree of the scale, D, to the fifth one. And how can be this a printer? We don't have to force Galen schematas in all the music we analyze, but Galen schematas are like the like a common language of the Baroque and period and the classical period. So it is really possible to find some versions or some different variant, complex, strange variant of and different uses of the Galen schematas that are not like the basic and, and common structure we can see in a book about music theory. But if we look at the bass, this is really a printer. And the printer wants the other numbers that are in the melody, 6, in this case we are in, uh, on the first one, so this is a 3, three, two, left hand, we have the three here, and also in the right hand, we have the three here, and now the three is in the top voice. So we have all the 
the elements for a printer, but we know that a printer is not an opening pattern. But in this case it works because it is like a justification, it is like something that is not the first thing that Bach thought when he composed this piece. He thought a melody. And then he harmonized it with something that is a printer. Look at the bass. We have three, three, six, seventh. Then this seventh doesn't resolve to the six in this way. There is another seventh that we have the three, the fourth, and then the three. And this D sharp is the resolution of the seventh, so the sixth, but on the E, so the the third. This is something that in the counterpoint is not permitted, but we can do it because we think this passage has one sound, has one harmony. Okay, so let's go on. In the next bar we see the melody that was in the right hand in the upper voice in the left hand. difference uh, that is typical of the fugues. So if we have in the answer the subject in the dux the leap one five so from the in this case the major to A we must have in our answer or the comics or risposta the fifth to the one so A B. So this could be mm, a printer maybe uh, inverted, but if we think a printer inverted by transposing the subject a fourth up, we should have. This. Okay, so we don't have obviously all the notes of a printer, but the structure is the same because it is a representation of the main melody of the main melody of this prelude. So look at the harmony. Three five chord. Then a seventh, six, six and four, and then we are in the next bar. Pay attention that we can find some of the notes of the printer, like for example F sharp. Then. the A, but it is in the harmony. Okay, so in the next bar we have the printer that starts from A and goes to D, that is the same of the second bar but in the upper voice. So, and then we are again on the first degree. And then we have another time, the melody, the, that is a printer inverted, like a printer inverted. So don't force, remember, the Gala Schemata to this music, but try to find a common language that we can reproduce today in our pieces and improvisations. <laughs> if we listen to the melodies, the following situation. D major, A major, A major and D major. Okay, now listen to what something strange happens. printer at bar 5 continues as a sequence chromatic and then starts a sequence and this sequence is particular because at bar 4 when the printer has not finished yet on this figuration 
like it starts the quint fall sequence and this quint fall sequence is not a simple quint fall sequence with <laughs> This harmony but uses all the elements of this piece. Look at this passage and I'm gonna say with my voice the fundamental notes. So bar four <laughs> So that is the art of combination, the art of composition and the art of counterpoint. When we have a sequence and we listen to a sequence, but it is not a sequence with all the events equal. On the sequence we have, for example, at bar 5, the entry at the middle of bar 5 of the second part of the main melody starting from a different key, for example G. And then we have the same starting from A. So we have here a quintfold sequence. Then we have, and this is really clear, a monte principale. A monte principale is a monte where we have the fundamental notes of the bass. And this is a monte principale that finishes to diminution. So let's play it. Leaping Romanesca with suspensions, so four, three, nine, eight. Okay, we have the D, this is like seven, six, but the fundamental note is B, so nine, eight. So this is a leaping romanesca. And now we have what I call expanded printer, because this is a printer. But the particular aspect of this printer is that we have a leap of a fifth down. us to the cadence. So this passage is look carefully how Bach uses the double figuration. We have three, 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 three and three. All are parallel thirds. So we have this figuration that is a simple figuration with with motion and only a third leap. Then from this G we have stepwise motion and then we have a passage from this to this. A common figuration of the Baroque and then another common figuration of the Baroque period. And as you can see uh, in the, on the first beat, when one of the two voices moves with leaves, the open notes of the leaves are underlined in the harmony of the point. So here the harmony is D major. So I can play an arpeggio when the when another voice plays a melody. Even if I play something that singular is not good. Because the important thing is the arriving point, parallel fifth or parallel octaves. And then the same, but in this case we have consonances. Then we have a particular passage because we have 9, 7, diminished fifth that are three consecutive dissonances. But it is possible in Baroque style because I remember that the most important thing is the arriving point. 
fiz live da Nanth Chord diminished. And then the conjunction with the left verse. And the septic cadence with the seventh. Six. Six. Four and six. The suspension of the upper voice is a 5, 4, 5, 7, 3, and then we have like a quiescenza, a final quiescenza. What's the quiescenza? The quiescenza will be the topic of the next video about Garan Schemata. The quiescenza is like a pedal of the first degree where we can use harmonies of the first degree, of the fourth degree, on the fourth degree with the minor 7, for example, and finally with the harmonies of the 5th degree with the 7th. This is the quiescenza, and the quiescenza is moved with the melodies that Bach uses in this piece. You find all the numeration in the analysis in the PDF you can download from my Patreon. As you can see, it's really common the use of suspensions 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, that with the bass has other numbers. We have this suspension in the two middle voices as the first time. Then we have the suspension in the two upper voices. The melody, the main melody in the bass, the suspension, and finally the resolution. This ability of analyzing piece is one of the most important ability that if you want to learn improvisation, you must develop. Because if you can recognize pattern for example, in a piece, in a simple piece like this, you can then reproduce them and you can practice and use them in your improvisation or composition. This actually is what I do on improvisation element. I take some passage from musical repertoire um, and I practice it in different way. I, I create a PDF that you can download on a pattern and improvisation element. And by practicing in this way, this is the best way for learning improvisation. The last thing you can do if you understand all these schematas and how they work in the harmony is transposing this piece, for example, using not uh, the change of the key, but using your awareness of harmony. Let's try, for example, to play this piece in F major, so a minor third up. I will not read in different keys. I think to these schematas and the melodies that Bach writes. Let's try it. And that's it, you can transpose thinking Gallant Schematas.
Would you like a personalized Partiment to coaching path that takes you from zero level up to advanced Partimentos such as the Fugal Partimenti of the Langlos manuscripts? Then take a look at the Lang coaching services that they've prepared for those like you who want to master this art with a solid foundation. Go to the following page bit.ly slash partimento coaching. Choose the best service for you and book your free consultation.